In early September 1944, after the success of the D-Day landings, the Allied breakouts, the occupation of Paris and the closing of the Falaise Gap, the German army was in turmoil and on the run. It was in these heady days that the euphoria among the Allied commanders was at an all-time high. The Germans were fleeing across France and their losses in men and weapons had been extremely high. This was coupled with the fact that the Russians had been clearly successful destroying Army Group Center with their summer offensive in the east. The Germans were retreating to the Gothic Line in Italy. The July 20 plot had attempted to kill Hitler. The Allied Vice was strangling Nazi Germany on three fronts. For Germany, all seemed lost. There were many Allied soldiers thinking that the war might be over by Christmas and that they might be able to go home to see their loved ones again soon. At this point, the American General Eisenhower was the supreme Allied commander in Europe and he needed to plan the upcoming invasion of Germany. He had to lay out a clear strategy. The brash American General Patton proposed, Give me 400,000 gallons of gasoline and I'll put you in Germany in two days. There was a real competition going on between the Allied generals on whose army could advance the fastest. British Field Marshal Montgomery was always keeping a jealous and watchful eye on Patton and his Third Army, who was tearing up the Germans whenever and wherever he got the chance. In an effort to take away some of Patton's steam and get some of the battle glory back into his corner, Montgomery insisted priority be given to his 21st Army Group's attack being made in the north. He wanted to unite a good portion of Bradley's 12th Army Group in support of a concentrated attack into Germany, with him in the lead of the column, of course. On top of all this, Montgomery wanted priority of all resources. He felt this would end the war sooner by striking at the Ruhr, the industrial heart of Germany. Eisenhower rejected the field marshal's proposal outright. He was aware of the glittering prospect of an early victory that Montgomery offered, but judged it beyond reach. As supreme allied commander, he had to take both political and strategic factors into account. He considered the political consequences in an American election year and the damage that might be done to inter-allied cooperation if one nation was seen as being favored over the other. Historian Stephen Ambrose wrote many years later, No matter how brilliant or logical Montgomery's plan for an advance to the Ruhr was, and a good case can be made that it was both, and no matter what Montgomery's personality was, under no circumstances would Eisenhower agree to give all the glory to the British, any more than he would agree to give it to American forces. But as things stood Eisenhower could not make his decisions solely on military grounds. He could not halt Patton in his tracks, relegate Bradley to a minor administrative role, and in effect tell Marshall that the great army he had raised in the United States was not needed in Europe. The reason that the Allied generals were fighting for resources was due to the fact that Allied supplies were at a breaking point. The port of Antwerp was not yet operational and expeditious methods like the Red Ball Express and flying in supplies could only make up some of the supply gap. The simple fact was that, because of supplies, only one army group would be given priority. Eisenhower had to pick which army group. Having allied armies combined together has its benefits, but also its problems. Montgomery was correct in stating that combining the allies would speed their advance, however this would raise new problems. The German army, as weak as it was at this point in the war, still had the ability to make limited counterattacks. Advancing in a concentrated manner would increase the risk of a flank envelopment. Even though this was unlikely, if fully exploited by the Germans, there was a possibility of a real disaster. Advancing in a fan-like manner over a broad front ensured that no Allied army got too much of the glory and that everyone cooperated. For a moment, imagine what the history books would have written if Eisenhower had agreed to allow Montgomery to advance just as he wanted. It would appear that the United States merely supported the war effort while the British finished off the Germans. That wouldn't be acceptable to the American public nor even to many of the British people. 
Eisenhower compromised and went forward with Field Marshal Montgomery's Operation Market Garden proposal on September 17 and ignored the Port of Antwerp for the time being. This would later come back to haunt him. This meant that all resource priorities went to the British and the airborne landings, but that's a subject beyond the scope of this video. According to German conceptions, it remained a mystery why the enemy had failed to mass all his troops at one point and force a breakthrough. Instead, the enemy did the German command a favor by distributing his forces in a fan-type manner over the entire front. The Germans knew that this broad front strategy would give them time, something they desperately needed in their battle on three fronts. Historians and armchair generals will likely argue over this subject for years to come, because frankly, it is interesting. But if a different strategy had been adopted by the Western Allies, who knows what would have happened. Perhaps the war in Europe could have been shortened by three months or lengthened by six months. Here are two other interesting videos that you might like. It was a pleasure making this video for your entertainment. Please hit the like, notification bell, and subscribe button to get future content. If you liked what you see, hit the subscribe button or share. Thank you. This has been Immersus Tech.